Hey folks, I'm Shell Things Industry .com. Well, a few tips that I learned about, uh, from the residency just regarding radiographs and endodontics. Now, everyone has their own way of doing things, and what I was taught is a very simple pattern to get into. It makes it a habit, and we're talking about preoperative radiographs and post-treatment radiographs, and even interstage radiographs, if you may, if you're placing calcium hydroxide. So let's just get right into it. Uh, I'll give you an example of some of the ways that we systematically look at these radiographs. And the reason why is because I was talking with a, a recent graduate uh, just this morning. We were talking about a case. And take a look at our radiographs, and it was exactly the way I was before the, the residency. Maybe kind of a sketchy radiograph preoperatively. And it sort of felt like you're sort of winging the diagnosis and not really taking a few minutes to really explore the radiograph and have a good idea of where the treatment is going in, the, in your diagnosis of the tooth. So some of the things that I learned, especially about reading, so we're going to take not only a straight on radiograph, and, we're the, and this image is going to be particularly around tooth number 36 or, F, or universal number 19. As you can see, uh, the diagnosis for this tooth would be previously tooth number 36 or 19 previously treated with asymptomatic apical periodontitis. And so you get a straight on, you also get a shift. So there's our diagnosis, and you also get a shift. So whether it be a mesial shift or a distal shift, it doesn't really matter. But what it allows you, it affords you to be able to see um, radiographically some things that may be uh, superimposed on each other. So for example, you can see the mesial canals are somewhat superimposed, and same with these distal canals. And when we shift it, now we kind of see a few other things going on here. It appears that we have two mesial canals that are obturated with some radiographic material. Additionally, you start paying attention to perhaps is that a perforation or not. And we take a look at the interradicular uh, bone, and it doesn't appear that way. So having a straight on and a shift before each time you see um, initiate endodontics is extremely useful and perhaps would you may argue it's a gold standard or a standard of somewhat uh, before you just attempt any endodontics fairly important so that was one tip so always a straight on and always a shift whether it be between calcium hydroxide uh, in, inter so you're doing two stages and the patient returns back take a preoperative radiograph and a, sh a straight on and a shift uh, even though you've only placed only may I say only, you place calcium hydroxide. So here's another example of the same patient. We saw her approximately two weeks after placing the calcium hydroxide. The literature supports that approximately 10 to 14 days um, as it's is most effective. And literature is all over, pretty wild with regards to calcium hydroxide. And this was a, so this was after we placed calcium hydroxide in the canals. Yeah, I know it's kind of sketchy all over here and not very dense. However, this allows me to see whether or not I've extruded some material that allows the patient to just forewarn them of some discomfort. And our endodontic mentor actually gave us a story about how, and so I told the dental student today was, uh, at one point uh, when he was during, during his endodontic residency, a patient uh, had been provided with endodontic therapy and they placed calcium hydroxide in a mandibular molar the patient went away and, and the, uh, the anesthesia wore off and the patient started feeling sort of a burning, tingling feeling and returned the next day and the, f the fiery tingling sensation was still kind of there and a radiograph wasn't taken post calcium hydroxide placement nor was it taken before, uh, during when the patient presented for treatment again the following, subsequent day and there was some sort of treatment. I think they accessed the tooth, removed some of the calcium hydroxide, replaced it, calcium hydroxide, thinking it was solely that tooth. And the patient went away, and the, numb, the anesthesia wore off, came back, and now he was in extreme pain. And so goes the story. They took a periapical radiograph, and there was calcium hydroxide in the inferior alveolar canal. So would that have prevented the extrusion, the taking the radiograph after placing calcium hydroxide? Definitely not, but it would have, you would have been able to forewarn the patient and uh, that he may have, if you do have the sensation, fiery tingling 
learning, come back in and maybe we'll send you to uh, an oral surgeon for evaluation. So fairly important to take your uh, post calcium hydroxide radiograph and then when the patient returns again to take another radiograph to see um, if there any you know if there's any osseous changes and if there has been any changes in the uh, the tooth itself, whether or not they've sought treatment uh, somewhere else before uh, seeking treatment from you again. Okay, so you never know what happens. So additionally as well, upon completion of treatment, it's a recommended uh, taking a straight on uh, radiograph and also a shift. And that will be for your records um, for down the road. Now, of course, the question may come up, do you want to take a a working length, you want to take a master cone. I mean, every situation is different. Some, some clinicians uh, like to take a working length with the 10 to 15 to 20 file uh, in the canal. Some folks like to take a cone check. Uh, we take a, I take a cone check, that's just through the residency. And some of our endodontic mentors wanted us to use a, a working length file, that, and that's every situation is different, and clinicians are, have their own ways of doing things. But these are just a couple tips uh, just to to really allow you to, or to enable you to better provide a, uh, a diagnosis for and a pretreatment plan in how you're going to tackle your endodontic therapy before you go ahead and do it. So I hope that helps. Cheers.